guys. We've got a gal playing outside and uh, we're going to have another game of Spanish Civil War today. We're using our um, pre-made boards uh, for this game and we're using some old Snapdragon terrain scenery for the uh, <coughs> dugouts and so forth. We're playing an attack and defend scenario for Chain and Command. So defending we're going to have um, militia, uh, communist steel legion militia. Um, I'm using the um, free PDFs that are available from the la one of the largest websites for the Spanish Civil War. Uh, and uh, so that's one of the Republican forces. So slightly better quality troops have had a degree of training. And they're going to be facing off against an attack uh, from the Spanish Foreign Legion. So I hope you enjoy today's game, another one of Chain of Command. And uh, we'll just show you some shots of the patrol phase as it plays out. This, we start in an attack defense scenario with four patrol markers already on board for the Republicans. So we'll just place those and then we get D6 moves by the attacking nationalist forces. And then we'll move into the normal patrol phase. OK, so we finished the deployment phase. The Republicans have one deployment point in this artillery position on this hill. Then they've uh, grouped their other two deployment points in their main defences here. Um, one in the left-hand bastion and one towards the centre. That means the positions on these far right have no deployment points for the Republicans. For the Nationalists, we've completed their deployment. And we've got uh, a deployment point in this little bit of woodland here. German advisors. We've got another deployment point in this field and a deployment point on the left near this uh, small supply depot uh, in this artillery position. So let's have a look at the game. So the Republicans have to capture this defended position that the Republicans are holding. Uh, the Republicans have paid quite a lot of uh, deployment uh, or quite a lot of uh, points for all these fortifications, so that will give them an advantage in the game. Whereas the Nationalists have the better quality troops attacking with their Spanish Foreign Legion. We'll start the game uh, with uh, rolling off for who's going to activate first, and then uh, their activation. Okay, so the Republicans have done well, and uh, they've got a high force morale. They started with force morale of 10. Uh, clearly the Commissar has been hard at work. And uh, we'll start with them rolling for activation. They get five dice in this game. All right, two sixes, so this will be a double turn. Two fours, which will be senior activations, uh, senior leader activations, and a five for a chain of command point. So we'll add that chain of command point and then see what we'll do with our senior leaders. OK, with two uh, rolling two fours, we've got two senior leaders. Now, in order to be able to bring reinforcements on, I don't want to deploy both of my senior leaders onto the table. So we're simply using one of the fours to deploy our senior leader to this point in the fortifications. That'll be the end of the turn because the other two were rerolls. So let's see what we get is reroll for our second turn. All right, another chain of command point, two more senior leader activations and two junior leader activations. Let's see what we do. Okay, so a relatively modest deployment by the Republicans. We've deployed uh, two um, small sections. Uh, this one of six men and the guy on the end there has got an automatic rifle. The others are all armed with normal rifles. And another section of uh, six men here. Uh, uh, they're now accompanying their senior leader. Um, and um, yeah, I've just realized I need to put their junior leader on the table with them, which I'll do in a second. Then over to the nationalist. I realised I got my figures slightly wrong. This guy here in the leather jacket. You can just see him there. There's a little star on his head. He is the senior leader. And the guy with his hand up there is the junior leader for the two sections that have deployed. All right, that's it for the Republicans. Let's see what the nationalists do with their first turn of the game. So the six is wasted. So let's re-roll that one. That looks a bit cocked. So we have a chain of command dice, two senior leaders, and a section. All right, let's see how the nationalists choose to deploy. Okay, so for the nationalists, we've deployed our senior leader here uh, back in the stream, in the stream bed, taking shelter uh, in a concealed position so he can bring his reinforcements on. And with the section deployment, we have deployed 
uh, one of our light mortar teams. So um, they uh, will have a think and see if they will kick off with some fire against those Republican. They can see in the defence. Okay, so our light mortar is going to open fire. It's going to use its spotters here who are looking round uh, the edge of that cornfield uh, and just can see the end of the Republicans. Uh, so this will be no line of sight, uh, but we will reduce the uh, cover by one. All right, and we roll a three and a five. Let's see how we do. Okay, so we need a four to hit, so that uh, will only be one hit, and this will count as light cover because we reduce cover by one, so the hard cover of the defences is reduced by one. So that will be a five, and the five against light cover will be one shock on those Republicans. That's it for the Nationalists first time. Right, nothing too much for the Nationalists to worry about at the moment. A little bit of uh, mortar fire raining down on them. And they roll a five, that's another chain of command dice. The six is nothing. So we get two section activations and a team activation with the two twos and a one. Get that two back. All right, with the one, I think the Republicans will probably deploy their artillery piece. All right, let's see what the Republicans do. Okay, quite a lot of activity by the Republicans this turn. So they've deployed their 75 millimeter gun into this emplacement here with the uh, one. And then with a two, they have uh, activated one of the squads that was already deployed onto the table, uh, and they rolled a seven, so they've moved them forward into that bunker. And then with the final two, they've brought another squad of six with that light machine gun onto the table with the intention of moving it across into that light machine gun position in due course. That's it for the Republicans. They can't really see anything this turn um, because the... Uh, Nationalists are out of line of sight, so that'll be the extent of their movement this turn. Over to the Nationalists. Okay, let's see the Nationalist activation. All right, quite a good roll. They get one more chain of command dice, uh, two junior leader activations, a squad activation, and a team. Let's see what the Nationalists do. Okay, with that set of dice rolls, uh, the Nationalists have really decided to go big. Um, the two junior leader activations has allowed them to bring uh, two of their large uh, sections on and um, the section activations has allowed to bring them the other mortar team on and the um, uh, unit activation has allowed to bring them their heavy MG on. So all of those units come on the table and given that the Republican forces are quite thinly spread at the moment, they're going to go for it and attack quickly. So what we've done is we've deployed this, um, this unit here of uh, uh, Foreign Legion so we got a uh, small squad of six just moving through the field. Another squad of six and the junior leader deployed behind this hedge. And a squad of five, including a light machine gun, deploying in the wheat field, also taking a bit of cover from the hedge. Um, here we've deployed our second mortar platoon and spotters. They should actually be a bit further over there, tucked in the wheat field. Uh, but. I decided they looked a bit nicer against uh, hiding behind this trench line. So um, I'll pop them down behind the trench line. I trust that's OK. I don't think it'll really change the course of the game exactly where they're deployed. And then over here, we deployed uh, with the team, the heavy machine gun, into this uh, defended position here. We deployed another um, squad over here. So a section here with a light machine gun uh, tucked behind this little hedge line. A section here advancing towards the right flank of the Republican position and another section uh, advancing up the road. So the Republicans have gone large, well, sorry, Nationalists have gone large, deployed pretty much all of their units onto the table and will now do their firing as they open up against the Republicans that they can see. Okay, so we'll open up with these squads here. So we get six shots for the light machine gun, three more for the rifleman in the light machine gun squad, six for the other rifleman, and one for the junior leader. So let's see uh, how we do. We need uh, fours to hit regular uh, troops, which is what the Steel Legion will count at. Wow, that's a pretty good, good set of rolls. Let's take out the misses. 
Wow, only two misses out of 16 shots. That's a remarkable first volley. You can tell these foreign legionnaires have had plenty of battle-hardened experience. Right, now they are firing at uh, Republicans in hard cover because they're all in these entrenchments. So we'll need six for casualties and uh, fives for shock. But we've got plenty of dice to roll. Let's see how this first valley, that valley does. Pretty good. So we've caused two casualties and two shock on the Republicans. All right. Not a great start for the Republicans. Let's mark those up. Okay, so now the uh, Nationalist uh, light mortars are going to open up against this squad that uh, is moving along the trench works. Uh, this will be, again, forced to hit. And no hits from the light mortars. That at least is some good news. And then finally, the mass of Republican infantry over in these uh, fortifications over here on this flank will open fire. So it'll be six shots for the light machine gun, seven, eight, nine for the rifleman, another six for the other rifleman, so that takes us up to 15, and then I think eight for the heavy machine gun. So plenty of firepower. Let's see how they do. Okay, so we've got two re-rolls on top of this mass of dice as we open up against the guys in the bunker. All right, so two re-rolls needing fours to hit. Right, let's take out the misses. Again, another good round of leading firing from the Foreign Legion. What, well, only six misses there, uh, far better than average. All right, now let's roll these. Again, five or sixes to do casualties as the Republicans are defending in hard cover. Okay, a bit better than last time. Two shock and one casualty against the Republicans in the bunker here. We'll take the casualty off. Okay, so that was a really fearsome turn from the Nationalists, some dramatic results there. Let's see how the Republicans do in response. Let's see what their activations are. They get a six, that's wasted, but four junior leader activations. Should be able to do something with that. Let's see what we're going to do as we move into the Republicans' turn. Okay, the Republicans have responded by running their unit that was uh, in the trench works into this position here. So we now have a light machine gun. We did take a point of shock for doing a run move. Uh, the units uh, in here are not activated, but my junior leader did activate the squad down here that's taken two shock. Uh, so they will be firing in a second. And then the second junior leader has uh, come onto the table and he's brought a squad on there who will be firing and a squad on back here. So we've got some firing from the Republicans. We've got one automatic rifle, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine normal riflemen. So they'll be going against the guys uh, in the hedge, uh, uh, in the wheat field and behind the hedge line. All right, let's open up nine shots in return. Okay, so we need fours to hit, firing at regulars. Again, not a bad bit of firing. Let's re roll that one. That one does look cocked. Not great for the Republicans there. That went off. But we've got five hits against uh, uh, those nationalists in light cover so the sixth will be one kill and against light cover that will be one point of shock um, uh, and we'll go with the leader let's see if we've got a leader casualty no we don't so one killed and one point of shock on the nationalists okay let's roll to activate the nationalists see how they do ah well they get a dull turn because they've rolled three sixes in fact i've got a feeling three sixes might be um something more they've got one uh, team activation and one more chain of command dice i'll just check what three sixes do okay three sixes does indeed mean something special it means the end of the turn so i uh, don't think there'll be any end of a turn facts because no one is routing um, <clears throat> and there's no smoke or anything like that on the table so we will simply do the fire from our heavy machine gun uh, with the activation roll of one and then in the first the nationalists will again have the first die roll the start of the new turn so that's eight shots needing fours to hit not doing so well this time only three sets hits uh, they will go against the republicans out in the open with their own light machine gun team uh, and we roll three fives that will be three shock against the republicans starting the new turn we've got one six uh, which won't do anything we've got two senior leader activations and two squad activations let's see what the nationalists choose to do. Okay, so down here with our senior leader activation, we have sent these two squads running forward, both rolled, uh, well, the one on the road rolled a 10, the one in the little field rolled a nine. So they're approaching the left-hand flank of the Republican position, moving fast forward. 
Uh, we have one other activation from the senior leader. He's activated his heavy machine gun. We also have a section activation. So we're going to activate the light machine gun. So both those guns will be firing to try and pin down the Republicans. Over on this side, we had another three activations from our senior leader here. So again, we got a great run result and we ran uh, or advanced this squad forward with uh, a 10. Uh, and we will activate these two other squads so they will both fire um, and we have another two so we will activate one of our light mortar squads and they will fire in support as well so let's do the uh, nationalist firing as they move forward we'll start with uh, the nationalists uh, firing from the hedge line so we have lost one guy we've only got one shock so uh, no penalty from that but uh, six riflemen uh, a light machine gun, so that's another six shots. And then three other riflemen. Okay, so these will open fire against these two squads uh, behind the fortifications. Again, trying to pin them down, needing fours to hit. Okay, so the Republican, sorry, the Nationalist fires tailed off a bit here. Not doing so well. So six, seven hits. Again, needing fives to cause a casualty, fives to cause a shock, six to cause a casualty. Three shocks are pretty good. Uh, we'll put the shock on these defending troops. All right, we'll now fire our light mortars against the same target. Uh, they don't have top cover, so we're gonna fire at these guys in preference rather than uh, the ones in the bunker. Actually, we will, uh, we're gonna go for the end run. So we'll go for the, we'll go for the guys uh, in the open at the end there. Yeah, they will lose one from their cover, so it'll only count as hard cover. Need fours to hit, one hit, and against light cover, a three has no effect, so no effect from the light mortar. And then finally, the light machine gun and heavy machine gun will open fire against that same squad. So six dice from the light machine gun, eight dice from the heavy machine gun, and I think there are two, so three supporting riflemen as well. So they open fire against this team at the edge here. Again, we need fours to hit. Uh, that looks like a pretty good round of firing. Let's get rid of the twos. All right, <coughs> and again, fives and sixes to have an effect. Ah, okay, that's pretty good. That's two casualties and two shock against that unit on the end. The Republicans are certainly taking a lot of firepower. So despite the great defenses, it's not panning out well for the Republicans. This unit's pinned, it's taken six shock. It's not far away from uh, having a, a route result imposed on it. Uh, just because of the sheer weight of firepower it's taken. The guys in the bunker here have taken three shock, and these other two units have taken the three and two. And we haven't been able to get our field gun into action, and it's now threatened by a potential assault by those infantry. All right, let's see how the nationalists uh, are impacted as the Republicans respond in this turn. Well, they get a double turn, uh, and an extra point uh, chain of command and dice, and a two. So that's simply a section activation. Let's see what we do with that. Simply a section activation. We'll activate this small section here. It loses a dice uh, because it's taken three shock, but it does have an automatic rifle. It's going to go against those uh, foreign legionaries advancing in the open. Okay, so that's two hits, uh, but the targets are in the open, so this might have some good effect. So a six is definitely a kill, and a four will be a shock. So one shock and one kill on the nationalists. Okay, so potentially quite a good role for the nationalists. We got uh, two fours, so we can activate our two senior leaders, allow us to bring our second senior leader onto the table and utilize our main senior leader and activate uh, our 75 millimeter gun with the one as well. Let's see how we do as we get on with activations for the Republicans. Okay, so the senior leader in his leather coat has activated this unit and moved it across from its position here across to the right looking to reform his section over here uh, and they will be firing they will get uh, two shots for the automatic rifle and two others for the rifleman the third rifleman will be lost because of the level of shock for our second point we took a point of shock off the guys in this building and they also have an automatic rifle so they will get six shots so we get 10 shots we're going to go against again the nationalists in the tree line needing fours to hit and this will be in light cover. Not very much, simply one shock against the nationalists. Not a great result. All right, we'll move on with the next units. Okay, so with the two, we deployed another section, our final section. So we have our, uh, our second final squad. We have our uh, 
section. I get my terminology with the Spanish <laughs> confused. We have three lots of uh, six, five or six troops. Um, so we have the final element uh, deployed here, final team perhaps, um, of five riflemen. Um, so we now have one, two, three in this squad, and one, two in the bunker, and three in the other squad under that senior leader. And there is the other senior leader who's just arrived here. Uh, sorry, here is the other senior leader. All right, they'll open fire. And the gun is also going to open fire going against these nationalists in the open. See if we can break them. Wow, that's a better bit of shooting. So we needed fours to hit. That's quite good. Pity all those sixes aren't for the damage. <laughs> all right, firing in the open. Three, four, fives or sixes. The ones and twos don't do anything. Five and sixes kill two, three and two more shock. So those nationalists have suffered for going out into the open. Okay, so we've pinned that unit of nationalists and that's the end of the turn for the Republicans. Let's see how the nationalists do. They get a double turn. They've got a chain of command dice and a one and a three. Let's see where we go. Okay, so the nationalists have resumed their advance on the right, though the junior leader here has moved forward and given an order to the unit on the road to uh, move up, but they only fold roll a three, so they stumble forward. And we've opened up with the heavy machine gun uh, against going against this unit on the right to see if we can cause this one to break uh, before we get into contact. So that'll be eight shots, needing fours to hit. All right, that's three hits and needing fives or six for damage. That's two more shock. That takes them up to eight shock. That will be a rout, and that will be the loss of that first Republican unit. That will be a bad thing to happen. Okay, so we rolled a double three, which is a six-inch move, plus the six-inch compulsory took that unit off the table. So this is a bad thing happens. Uh, I think we count it as a team because they're only part of the section. So that is a three. So a three breaks is one point off the uh, force morale for the Republicans. All right, and that's it. And we'll then move on to the uh, next turn for the Nationalists. All right, uh, great, great result for the Nationalists. Another double six, so they get another bonus turn. I'm sure they'll continue their attack on this right flank. So they've got a junior leader activator activation, a section activation, and a team activation. All right, let's see how they go. Okay, so with our junior leader activation, we've moved both of these squads forward. So they're now approaching the end of the Republican defensive position and looking like they're going to outflank them. And with the one and the two, we will open up with our heavy machine gun and our other section that is uh, in deep fire support. So that will be um, three for the riflemen, six, nine, uh, plus eight for the heavy machine gun uh, is 17 dice. And then we'll switch their fire now to this bunker, see what they can do to that. All right, let's see how we do. Plenty of shots going against the bunker. Fours to hit. Not such good firing this time. Okay, and then fives or sixes to do something against that unit in the bunker. No effect this time. Finally, those defences paying off for the Republicans. All right, that's it for that turn. And yet another turn for the Nationalists. Let's see how they do. Okay, plenty of activations there. Two junior leaders two sections and a team. At least it's the end of the Nationalist turn, but let's see how that fire will do. Okay, so more heavy fire will be coming from the Nationalists. So we activated the junior leader. We've moved one uh, section um, up onto the uh, rocky uh, promontory, so they'll have hard cover and can now fire down uh, right into the Republican positions without any uh, protection from their trench works. And the second squad's moved up so it can get towards its victory conditions of getting into the defensive position. Um, we will use our other uh, junior leader activation to activate the guys in the fence line. They will open fire against the Republican positions here. So let's open up with the guys in the fence line, see how they do. Okay, again, needing fours to hit. Not uh, the hot dice have left a bit for the nationalists. Only five hits. Again, needing fives or sixes, no damage. So good, good benefits from the defences this turn from the Repub for the Republicans. And then we have two twos and a one. So with a two and a one, we'll fire the heavy machine guns, again from the far base over there for the Republicans, for the Nationalists rather, sorry. So that's six, three for the riflemen, and four, five, six, seven, eight for the heavy machine gun. Again, they will open fire against the bunker. They need fours to hit the bunker. Truly terrible firing this time. 
It really has swung uh, well worse than average. Only five hits. And then we need fives uh, to do shock and sixes to do damage. So only one shock against the banker. And then we'll open fire for the final two with one of the mortar teams. And then again, we'll go against the Republicans in the open next to the bunker. That's one hit. It's in the open. A three. I, sorry, in light cover, a three will do nothing. So all that firing simply results in one shock on the Republicans. OK, so this Republican junior leader is going to activate. He's going to fire this squad with its automatic rifle and the squad in the bunker with its automatic rifle to fire up against these nationalists in light cover here. Let's see how we do. Fours to hit. Not bad round of shooting, plenty of hits. Let's see what we can do against targets in light cover. Uh, just one casualty. Let's see if the junior leader is hit. <coughs> he is hit. Lucky firing for the Republicans. Unfortunately for the Nationalists, a sniper there for the Republicans has taken out their junior leader. He is now wounded and can't activate from the range of the uh, turn, so that will crimp certainly the Nationalist assault on this flank. So some good firing there from the Nationalists. All right, next activation. All right, so with the one, we're going to activate our field gun. Six shots, see if we can kill off this Nationalist squad that's facing us. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's four hits. And this will be in the open. Yeah, they are destroyed. That'll be a bad thing's happened for the Nationalists as they've had a squad wiped out. I think on a one, that'll only be a uh, uh, um, section wiped out. On a one is simply the loss of one point of team morale for the Nationalists. OK, so with the Republicans' final activation, we moved this unit up to this uh, trench line so he can potentially do some long-range fire against the Nationalists up on the hill while being in cover. And this small squad down here opened fire against the guys behind the fence line there and did uh, one shock on them. All right, so uh, now down to the Nationalists. Um, two more chain of command dice. So they might be able to declare an end of turn and recover their junior leader. I think you can do that if you've hit six chain of command dice. One senior leader activation and one junior leader activation. Let's see what the nationalists get up. Right, end of the turn. So we have indeed, did, uh, indeed ended the turn, which allowed us to recover our junior leader over here. We used the four to deploy our final senior leader for the nationalists, and he's joined this grouping over here. So we've got more ability to fire those without the junior leader present. And then we used our junior leader activation to again open up with this fire base against the Republicans at this end of the line. So let's see how we do. Needing fours to hit. Oh, the shooting's getting better again. I think we've got one cocked dice there. Nope, that one's missed. <coughs> All right, let's see how we do. Fives or sixes. All right, two dead, but no casualties, no shock. So two dead against the Republicans. Let's see if... Uh, the junior leader is injured. He's attached to one of those squads, but he's not. OK, we'll take those casualties off and move on with the next. Right, this is our activation. We're combining a one and a two to make a three. So a junior leader activation, he'll activate the guys in the bunker and this small squad down here to open fire uh, at the guys uh, behind the hedge line. Uh, and we'll use the two to activate this uh, section down here. Uh, they will also join the fire fight. Uh, and we'll use our final one to activate our gun which will go against the Nationalists. Now it's cleared its immediate target away and hopefully start doing some damage against those guys in the woodlands because they will count as open targets to artillery fire. All right, let's start with our rifle. All right, let's find these guys. Let's see what we do. Uh, going against the Nationalists behind the hedge line, needing fours or more to do a hit. But they are in light cover. So good set of shooting. Um, and fours will do shock, so simply two elements of shock, so not a great result to all of that firepower. And then finally we will fire our field gun, going against uh, <coughs> the teams behind the hedge line needing fours to hit, that's pretty good, and these guys will count in the open. Okay, so that's two kills, uh, that will uh, further do some damage to the Nationalist firepower. All right, so we've got two senior leader activations. Uh, we're going to be activating uh, the firepower from this fire base, and our senior leader can reach back and fire one of the mortar teams. They're going to go after this gun because it's uh, going to really cause a lot of damage now. It's started to zero in and has no other targets, so want to do something about that. 
The other senior leader will do the fire vice down there and we've combined two ones, so we'll do some firing from the rifleman up on the ridge. All right, let's start with the rifleman on the ridge. There are six shots here and they will go against the guys in the trench that have no cover. So we need fours to hit. That's pretty good firing. And then threes and fours to do shock. So that will take their shock up to six. So they are now pinned, but not yet broken. Okay, we'll now then do the far base down here. So we've got six from the light machine gun, eight from the heavy machine gun, and three from the rifleman firing at the guys in the bunker and the guys whoa, out in the open next turn. Two more dice to roll, which I just dropped. Yeah, can't get that one out. Hang on a second. Two more dice to roll. There we go. Okay, well, they both resulted in hits. That'll be encouraging to the Nationalists. Another great round of Nationalist firing. But again, fives or sixes to do casualties. How do we do? One six and two fives. So the shock really is building up against these units now. All right, pretty good for the Republicans. That simply were fire. All that firing resulted in uh, one shock on the gun, which was from the mortar fire, and all the small arms had no effect. All right, that's it for the Nationalists. Let's see what the Republicans do. Two more chain of command dice, two ones and a four. Let's allocate those and see if we can drive off this attack. Okay, given this is a defensive battle, the senior leader simply rallied three shock off that unit in the open there to try and keep these units in position. And then we're again, we're opening fire with our heavy gun. Uh, so six shots against the nationalists, needing fours to hit. That's three hits. This will be in the open. So that's two shocks and one kill against the nationalists. All right, we completed that turn. The uh, Nationalists continue to push, so we activated the junior leader here and move forward with both squads. They now are within the defensive works. The Republicans have got to throw them out. We use the far base up there and the much reduced far base up here to try and uh, cause these two units here to break to uh, allow the Nationalists just to drive into the position uh, unopposed. Both are now on five shock, so both are pinned and their firepower will be halved. But uh, for the Republicans, we're still very much dependent on this field gun and can it hold the day? All right, on to the Republicans. Let's see how they can respond. Okay, so we get three junior leader activations and a one for the gun. So the gun will be firing again. Can we break this nationalist attack? All right, so uh, the Republicans fired. Uh, these two units, very weak level of firepower, only four or four or so shots. They did manage to kill one of the charging nationalists. Uh, but they didn't cause uh, a leader casualty, so they are still in good position. Over here, these two uh, squads, uh, or one of these squads opened fire at the opposition uh, on the fence line and caused another couple of pins. And this unit opened fire against the Nationalists coming in from the right flank, but failed to cause any casualty. Again, final action of the turn will be the one using the uh, field gun again. Let's see if we can break these units in the woods, they are taking sustained artillery fire. They need fours to hit, that's three casualties, but these will count as in the open. Two ones, that's nothing, but a five is another kill. Not enough to break those units, but they're teetering. Right, it's all happening this turn with the, uh, we had uh, two twos, I think. So we used that as a senior leader activation and opened fire with the two heavy machine guns. They have now wiped out uh, this unit. They caused one more casualty, it already had five shock down to two, that's an auto break. We rolled a nine, so they fled off the table. We then uh, did a triple move with both of the squads here. We have now denied this jump off point to the Republicans, uh, and we are now close assaulting the troops uh, from the rear of the bunker. They will not be in cover. Both units took one point of shock for doing the charge, uh, but they really are now looking to roll up this position. It's only that field gun that is proving a major challenge. All right, let's do the hand-to-hand -hand combat as the Nationalists charge into the rear of this bunker. Okay, so we've just done the close assault here. There were uh, three men in the bunker plus a junior leader facing five men uh, and a junior leader. Um, the uh, uh, Republicans had seven points of shock, so that did not go well for them, but uh, we were charging from quite a distance. So the Nationalists lost 2d6 for that. Um, but they were charging in the rear of the bunker, so the Nationalists um, 
caused the Republicans to lose half their dice as a result of that. And the Republicans did have an SMG in the assault with their junior leader as well, which gives them two extra dice. So in the end, it was uh, five against three, and then we had to halve the defenders' dice because they were being attacked in the rear, so it went five against one. And we caused two sixes, which are two kills. So the, uh, and let's see if one of those is the junior leader. No, it's not. Um, put the junior leader in there. But it did cause two casualties and two more shocks. So it's taken the shock up to seven and the unit down to five. So they will now route, and they route ten. Uh, that is close enough to the table edge that they will break and they will leave the table. All right, so the nationalists have now stormed into the bunker uh, and they've completely destroyed that platoon, actually. So this is another bad thing happened for uh, another section wiped out. See what we get. We get a five, so that'll be minus two points. And we also had a junior leader routing from the table. So a four uh, is another two points. So that's four more points off the Republicans. So the Republicans are down to three and they've also effectively lost this jump off point and we roll a six for that. So that is another two points. So the Republicans are down to a force morale of one and the Nationalists are still on a force morale of eight. So I think we have to conclude that the Republicans at this point will break uh, they have lost one complete uh, section, uh, or platoon rather, <coughs> um, and uh, the Nationalists have broken in to the defended position. The unit of the gain for the Republicans undoubtedly goes to their artillery battery here. That's had tremendous effect and has pretty much wiped out, or wiped out, wiped out the effectiveness of this attacking Nationalist platoon, but it did prove an effective firebase. Uh, but both of these units uh, certainly were pinned. We had to take our uh, junior leader's action this turn to take some uh, shock off those units, and they're down to three men each, um, and that was a force of 18, so uh, down to six. So um, pretty much on the point of breaking, and a bit more artillery fire probably would have broken that piece, but they weren't able to hold off this attack from the right flank. And the um, Nationalist firebase here in the woods, although it did take big damage by the end of the game, and the other firebase over there in those boulders, proved pretty much impervious to Republican fire, and the defences didn't prove strong enough to keep the Nationalists out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game. I'm still learning the chain of command rules. I'm sure we got some of that wrong, but uh, oh, it was good fun. And uh, I hope to see you again next time. Cheers, everyone.